Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, you want to start live? Sir, one minute, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute, sir. Yeah, sure. Please start, sir. Uh, so, uh, good evening all. Uh, this is Dr. Divyansh. Uh, I work at Shankara Hospital, Bangalore as a consultant, VR and ocular oncology services. So, today is a session where we are going to learn how to focus the microscope correctly and when you are utilizing a biome, how to focus the biome correctly. So, we have uh, uh, today our invited uh, uh, speakers. One is uh, Sir S, uh, Mr. S. Uh, Srinivasan, who is a regional Hello. business development head in Southeast Asia. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Liz. L Lars Lisa. is B. Yeah. Okay. It's it's Lars. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the uh, no, mispronunciation. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So the, Mr. Lars, who's uh, 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 a sales manager from uh, uh, who covers Europe and Middle East Asia for Oculus India. So, uh, uh, Lars, can you uh, uh, guide us through the uh, topics or what all you want to cover and then uh, start presenting the, the presentation or either give us a demo about how to do things better with what we are doing uh, wrong right now? <laughs> I certainly can. Thank you very much uh, for uh, letting us uh, join your meeting here on a Tuesday. Uh, as uh, I am sitting, um, I'm sitting right now in uh, Denmark. So, uh, it is hard for us to be further apart, uh, but uh, also thank you for the meeting we had uh, about four weeks ago. I really enjoyed the visit uh, to the um, Sankara Foundation Hospital in um, in uh, Bangalore. So um, what I'm what I'm going to try to uh, uh, explain uh, today is uh, should be something you already know. Uh, how to use a microscope, what functions does the microscope have, and what does it do for the view, both for the anterior view, but also for the posterior view. I have a short presentation, and the first part I'm going to go through fairly quickly, because these are the parts uh, that you know, and uh, let me just see if I can um, share screen here. and. Let me know if uh, can it, can everybody see this uh, page? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as said, uh, I'm sales and training manager for EMEA and uh, Asia. I work for Ocular Surgical in Germany, but live uh, in Denmark and work out from Denmark. So again, thank you so much for letting us join us. Uh, you are all using the. Uh, um, using the biome and originally the biome is the original non-contact viewing which started when we transitioned from the uh, uh, ophthalmoscope down to a non-contact viewing system what you see here is the biome one which we over the years have developed from the one to the two to the three to the four and eventually uh, to the to the biome five, which you see here. So it's already 10 years old. The reason why I show you these different models is because I know in India, uh, there are a lot of the old models uh, still active, uh, the biome three and the biome four. And um, the reason why I mentioned this is because uh, has to relates to uh, some of the things that I'm going to show you uh, in the presentation. Obviously, you also we also have the uh, disposable biome ready, and we also have a disposable lens for the recite system, which I believe you don't use. So generally, I use some terminology and some technologies that uh, should be common and known to you, but let me just run quickly through them. We have a working distance. Uh, this is the distance from the microscope down to the focal plane. And this defines the length of the biome you should use on that particular microscope. So either the short or long biome. And I will get back to this as well. We also have the field of view. 
That is how much you can see either in your eyes or down through a microscope. Uh, and uh, anterior, it is a flat plane, uh, which you are very well know, know from uh, cataract surgery and anything anterior. But when, when we go into the posterior, it is not a flat plane. We consider an inverted dome plane or inside the eye. The depth of field is often mixed together with the depth of focus. But I like to say my depth of field is how much I can see in the C axis, so to speak. Um, whereas the depth of focus is how much of this depth of field that I actually can see clearly that are in focus. And this I will get back to as well. Um, you probably know the path, the pathocality term. That means that we can focus the microscope on the limbus or on the iris, and then we can zoom in and out, and the and the uh, iris stays in focus. But you have probably also experienced the opposite of focusing on the iris and then zooming in, and then suddenly it goes out of focus. That means it's not parfocal. Uh, and using the biome, I will show you uh, why this is, uh, why this is uh, important. Today, we also use 3D heads-up systems where the, where the human eyes are replaced with the camera. And uh, it has its benefits, but it also has some drawbacks, like it has no, you have no accommodation in the camera, and therefore uh, focusing the microscope and the biome is even more important. So, what does this mean, the magnification dynamics? Well, this is a microscope. We can call it a generic one. Uh, every microscope, depending on the objective lens, has a working distance, which defines the focal plane or the focal point of the microscope. This plane we want to bring to the uh, limbus. And at uh, any given time or any magnification, we have a field of view, and we also have a depth of focus. At low magnification, the depth of focus is very high, whereas and wide field of view, whereas at uh, high magnification, we have a very shallow depth of focus and a narrow field of view. And this can, or this is the reason why sometimes if you zoom in with a microscope, um, you will go out of focus. And I will get back to this. So very quickly, you know this. The optical pathway starts with the surgeon. Does he wear glasses or without glasses? Know the optical power of your glasses and which part of the glass you're using because I have very focal, so it depends whether I'm using the top or the bottom. Uh, we have the eyepieces that needs to be adjusted to the optical power of the surgeon with or without glasses and individually uh, adjusted, but you all do this. And of course, this should be focused on the focal plane. We have beam splitters for cameras and for assist and view, but these doesn't really impact uh, the optical quality. But what does impact the optical quality is the main optics, because the main optics, that's where the magnification or the zoom function is inside the microscope head. So if you zoom in and out, it is happening inside the optical head and it does not change the position of the microscope. And some say, well, it also defines the focus, but not really because the focus is locked. Any microscope we use for, uh, for ophthalmology, 
is locked at 175 or 200 millimeters. And that's the focus. So we cannot focus the microscope. We can move the microscope so we can move the focal plane with the microscope to the point like the iris we want to look at. The objective lens is specifically the one that defines the working distance of the microscope. And for ophthalmology, it's 175 or 200. And it's always one of these two uh, in 99% of the time. And that's why we have uh, specifically with the BIM5, we have made a short version for the 175. We have made a long version for the 200. And of course, we have a reduction lens that fits. Uh, and back to the point where, where we have some cases where a new microscope has been bought, but one have taken the old biome to the new microscope. Uh, so you could have the situation where you have a short biome on a microscope with 200. Uh, it gives a little bit inconvenience when you switch from uh, engaged and disengaged biome because you have to move the microscope a little bit. But uh, over time, we hope uh, that uh, we can change uh, these short biomes uh, on the 200 millimeter microscopes so you can have a long one. And I will show you what the benefits are for a what I call double power focality. It consists of the SDI, which is obviously the inverter that takes the right channel, shifts it over to the left, and the left shifts it over to the right when you use a biome. Um, I won't go into the details which models you have. The biome five consists different models and different length, electrical, manual. We have a dovetail, we have adapter plate, biome five, reduction lens, and we have a front lens. All these things you already know about, and I'm not here to sell this. I'm and uh, more to show you how it works. You are probably using the gold lens or similar, where this one uh, goes from 60 degrees up to 130 degrees. And we also have a small one with deep set eyes or for uh, pediatric uh, uh, patients as well. So we adapt to most microscopes. Oh, that was the quick part. Now to the fun part. <laughs> so. Retinal viewing, either contact or non-contact. For this matter, you all are probably familiar with the contact version. We're talking about the non-contact version, uh, which have different uh, benefits and no contact, uh, easy to move the, the eye, and um, we have a good depth of focus and um, all the other benefits. So to understand the importance of why I stress this focal length. We have three different kinds of microscopes in general. We have the camera. And uh, I was so fortunate to visit uh, Dr. Manish Nagpal in, um, in Ahmedabad. So uh, this slide could be um, a little bit influenced of his trip to, uh, to, to the mountains and uh, take pictures of uh, bears. Certainly, he finds a bear a bear, and he can zoom in and out. That means he can bring the bear closer, not necessarily in focus, but his camera on this telescopic lens also has a focusing function. So he can zoom in the bear and he can even focus on the bear. Unfortunately, um, we also have a simple version like the binocular. Uh, you still see the bear, but you cannot zoom in or out. You can only focus on the bear. So your, so your field of view and your magnification of the binocular stays the same, but you can bring it in focus. That's the, that's the simple version of the camera. The second one, that where we have taken one function out of the camera is that we have the microscope. 
it has a working distance, which is locked. And this is where the focusing comes into place with the, mi with the microscope is that in order to focus a microscope, you have to bring the microscope up and down because this working distance is locked, 175 or 200. So we will need to bring the microscope down to the eye level, and that will bring the eye in focus. Once we have done this, we can zoom in and out, and we can get a more detailed view when we zoom in, and we can get a bigger overview when we zoom out. The, 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 the problem with, the, with this magnification of this zoom is that it obviously changes our field of view, but it also invisibly changes our depth of focus. And that's what we use when we use uh, when we do the retinal viewing. So these are the three different kinds of microscope. The, the bottom one is the one we're gonna focus on. So the depth of focus. On the first picture, you can see, I have brought the microscope down to a bed of flowers and focused right below this big flower. That means everything in the picture stays in focus or is in focus. On the second picture here on the right, I have actually brought the microscope down so that the center of this flower is in focus. That means everything below, that means down here, is out of focus. What we cannot see in the picture is everything above the flower up here is in focus in this depth of focus. So that's kind of the thing we have with the um, with a um, surgical microscope so as i said we have a microscope we have a working distance which defines the focal plane and we have an eye the focal plane we need to bring down to the limbus or you can use the iris that's also perfectly fine At we have the field of view and we have the depth of focus at low magnification. Wide field of view, deep depth of focus. That's why you, when you do an anterior surgery, you can place the microscope in a large range over the eye and still be in focus. Whereas if we zoom in or we use high magnification, you will, you will find out that just a second you will find out that um, your depth of focus gets very shallow and this is important to remember when we even go further so if we zoom in and we place the microscope at the limbus means that we can zoom in and out and stay in focus on the anterior that means the, the anterior or the microscope is par focal with the limbus. And how does that look? On, in, on a tooth and a drill, it looks like this. You can see the whole shaft of the tooth is in focus and it's very deep. But when I turn up the magnification to high magnification, only the central part is in focus. And so this is my depth of focus at high magnification. And you can see, I see the same hole in the tooth, but my field of view just got smaller. So what does that mean when we change from anterior to posterior? Well, we add a secondary microscope, which contains the reduction lens, the front lens, eye anatomy, the cornea, anterior chamber lens, is the phagic, aphagic, pseudophagic, or no lens at all. And the view changes to the curvature of the inside of the eye, the retina. It changes from a flat to a spherical view. So when we talk about viewing, we have observation angles always calculated from the middle. And when we talk, well, when we say how much is the observation angle, we only 
measure the one side, but of course it's 360 degrees around. Uh, so 90, 60, and 130 degrees. The reduction lens uh, is made that it takes, it is done so that it takes the working distance or the focal plane of the microscope and brings it up so that we can, to what we can call a virtual plane, so that we can focus the front lens of the biome down into this new virtual plane and get the retina in focus. That is the function of the reduction lens. Parfocality posteriorly means that we can zoom in and out and the macula stays in focus. And that means we need to place the microscope first and then focus the biome on the retina. What is special about the biome optics or the oculus optics is that we know that the eye is a sphere. So instead of pretending that we have a flat focal plane, we have twisted the focal plane of the posterior view a little bit. So when we have a depth of focus, it does not move in a, in a horizontal line so that we get out of focus when we get out here. No, it moves this corrected focal plane. So you see, you actually get also the far periphery in focus. What does that look like? A low magnification, this edge here, this edge here, that is 90 degrees. So that's 90 degrees. Our depth of focus is almost at least two, three quarters of the eye is in focus and the retina is in focus all the way up to 100, maybe 120 degrees. It's a little hard to say in these eyes. But we turn up the magnification. You see very quickly, now it's only the loop of this flex loop and the very tip that is in focus. This is our depth of focus now. And our field of view is now down to about 60 degrees. And this is the yellow over here, symbolizes that uh, field of view we have at high magnification. So at low magnification, high magnification, the microscope, depending on which microscope you use, and I understand you have several different, but in principle, it works the same. You have an entire zoom range of the microscope. It can be from 3.4 up to 25, or it can be from five to 16. That depends on the microscope. But what I have found out is we have a low point and we have a high point and we wanna stay in between these two um, amounts of zoom or magnification because if we zoom out too much in the low end, we will look not only through the lens of the front lens, but we will look outside the lens and look outside the eye. So we lose resolution. In the other end, if we zoom in too much, and if you remember that if we, that the depth of focus decreases when we zoom in, that means if we go too far, we lose depth of focus, meaning that area where your instrument will stay in focus. What I have found out, and I call this the sweet range, this low point is about seven. Don't get hung up on seven. It can be a little less, be a little bit more. The other end is about 16, seven times of magnification. With the oculus optics, you should get enough magnification to see the macula and do your surgery 
at around 17. So my sweet range, my recommendation is to stay in between seven and 17. As I said, this is the sweet range. How do we do this? Well, we turn the magnification up to about one third of what you have on the microscope. That happens often to be around seven. And uh, that decreases our depth of focus and our field of view, but not so much that you cannot find the eye. So you move the microscope down until you find the limbus. You release with your hands. You increase the magnification all the way to the maximum to decrease the depth of focus to the absolute minimum so that you can focus on the limbus. And now you use the foot switch of the microscope and find, you should probably just focus down a very little to focus on the limbus, okay? That will bring the microscope in the right height over the eye so that the microscope is parfocal to the limbus. Then you use the foot switch again to XY over the center of the eye to coaxially uh, co align the microscope. Then we engage the biome with the lens adjusted up at least half or if it's a, a biome ready, all the way up to the top so that we don't hit the eye when we swing in the biome. And then we adjust the, the, the wheel of the biome down until we get a clear image of the retina and the macula. And remember, when you engage the biome, do not zoom out, stay at high magnification because we also want to focus the biome where we have the very, very small depth of focus posterior. So when we focus the biome down, the focal plane of the biome on the retina will actually come, will come up from behind the eye and focus on the retina. Once you have focused on the retina, of course, given that you can see the retina when you focus. Uh, if you cannot see the, the retina, I, will, uh, I would recommend you to adjust the biome down till you're about seven, eight, 10 millimeters over the eye. Um, and then you can always find adjust later. Then you zoom out, you get your full uh, field of view. You observe what, the, what kind of the pathology you have. And then you disengage the biome. You finish your, uh, you finish your uh, setup with the extra trocars or uh, lubricating the cornea or whatever your procedure is. What does this look like when you do this? Well, uh, here we have an artificial eye. Uh, I have um, I, I have taken the handles. I turn on the light for the anterior. I move the microscope down. As you can see, it's a bionicle eye. I always use this as a reference. Uh, I'm a little bit shaky here, more than you are, of course. I found the, the, the limbus right here is in focus. I zoom in and I go out of focus. And now you will see that my top of my cornea is in focus. So I, I focus the microscope down until the limbus is in focus. I use the foot switch XY to center the microscope over the eye. I switch off the anterior light. I switch in the biome and now you can, you have a retinal view that is out of focus. And slowly I adjust the biome until I get a very high magnified picture of uh, the macula right here. 
And then you will see, now I will use the foot switch to zoom out and you will slowly see the full field of view um, inside the eye. And you, as I said, this yellow edge here, that's 90 degrees. So it's more than 130 up here and almost the same on the other side. So we always get the question, oh, we have to adjust or we have to refocus um, when we are doing surgery. But let me tell you, and at least if, uh, if, you, if you take something with you, is that don't panic. If you go out of focus during surgery and you have followed this procedure uh, when you started the procedure, you do not go out of focus because we have now calibrated the biome to the microscope to this patient's eye. And the only thing that can bring the view of the retina out of focus if you, is if you adjust the biome or you refocus the biome, okay? Uh, you can go out of focus up in the top part of the eye, but that, that has to do with the zoom. So if you do go out of focus before you start, refocusing the biome or the microscope, just relax, stay calm, and then use the magnification of the microscope to zoom out a little bit because zooming out will increase the depth of focus and probably what you're looking at will become in focus again. So stay calm, zoom out, and then see if it doesn't help because when you zoom out, your depth of focus increases. And another thing that we often hear is, yeah, but what if I move the microscope? The focus inside the eye does not change with the focus or movement of the microscope. It only changes if you adjust, if you adjust the biome or the biome ready because the calibration happens between the microscope up here, the, re the reduction lens and the front lens and the length of the eye. To prove this, I have another video. And um, so if you move the microscope, all I want you to do is, of course, sometimes we have to move the patient. If you move the microscope, you need to move the mi microscope disengage the biome, move the microscope. When you want to move the microscope back in, engage the biome. And remember that the biome is now calibrated to this eye. So you simply move the microscope down until you are about maybe seven, eight, 10 millimeters over the eye. And then I have a video that shows what you will see. Please notice, well, it's a little bit too hard to see, but uh, the retina is actually in focus on this screen up here. And what you can see is I have a large distance from the front lens down to the eye. This symbolizes that we have moved the microscope and now we have put it down again. What I would like you to see is when I move this lens down, these veins or blood vessels, they will become clear. But what I also want you to see is this edge here where it's black and white, that is the edge of the front lens, this edge. When we look down through, down through the reduction lens and the microscope, this edge is our limit. And you can see I have zoomed in so much that this lens, uh, this edge and this edge up here is about the screen. So we are actually up, up, at around six, seven times magnification. And then I want you to notice this edge here or the pupil, how it moves out to the edge of the lens, okay? 
This shows me how close we are to the cornea, right? So what I would recommend you, and I will let you know, so now I start the video and notice this part here stays in focus. The pupil moves out towards the edge of the lens here. You see my field of view. Oh. Sorry. My field of view increases as I get closer to the eye. And you can see that this edge here now moves out. Now I'm in the right height. Now I go, now I try to go too close. And what you see is this edge here, it's 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 like it's folding around itself. So now I move back a little bit back. I'll show you. Here, I'm in the right position, right here. You see, this edge is close to the edge of the lens. I have 90, I have 130 degrees. And what I what I would I what I would recommend is is not to get greedy about the field of view. The lens is designed to give you 130 degrees. It can give you more, but that will probably uh, make you touch the cornea, right? And we don't want to touch the cornea. So don't go closer than four millimeters. You will only touch the cornea and your field of view will not, uh, it will not be better for the surgery. As you can see here, I will start again. When I get closer, it's like this edge here. It's kind of like it's folding. It's hard to see on the video. But now I move up a little bit more. And you see now this edge out here, in the, right here, you see this? This is a good limit of your retinal view. And you can see, I see 90 degrees here and here and way up high up uh, 130 degrees this is the this is the perfect position but you can raise the microscope a little bit to about six seven that will give you almost almost full view but it will give you a little bit extra distance so the lens start, doesn't fog during surgery or get misted or touch the cornea so to recap uh, this uh, presentation, uh, I will uh, I will happily uh, share with you so you can have it in paper uh, or on your phone or on your laptop. And uh, just remember, if you follow these steps, uh, this is the kind of view you would get. And uh, if you move the microscope, the biome does not go out of focus. Your distance from the front lens to the cornea defines the keyhole effect. So if you're too far, you, it's like you're looking through a keyhole, but you can bring the microscope a little bit closer to minimize this. And that brings me back to uh, which I probably think you have. You might have some microscopes that has a working distance of 200, but have maybe an old biome uh, which is a short biome. So you will not be able, when you follow this procedure with a perfect setup, you will be able to bring the microscope in, uh, the biome in and out, and both anterior and posterior will stay in focus. Unfortunately, if you have a short biome on a 200 mil microscope, you will not be able to both uh, have zero keyhole effect and have the anterior in focus. You will be, you must move the microscope a little bit up or down. But just remember, if you focus the biome at highest magnification, it is only by adjusting the biome, the retina goes out of focus.
I think that's um, that's probably as much as I can uh, put into <laughs> this short period of time. Any questions? Hello. Hello. Hello, Latif. Any questions? Hello. Yeah. Uh, hi. This is Divyan Shah. Yeah, Last, there was a fantastic presentation. Yeah, and a uh, lot of lot of learning points. Uh, <clears throat> I would say it was like a deja vu of uh, we learning the microscope focusing by our head of the department, Dr. Mahesh, and uh, I, I would vouch for it that each and every step which you have suggested has been told to us in depth by himself uh, when we had started Good. surgeries and yeah hello so it was it was really impressive that you have documented it so well that how a focus works and how the field of view works and how to focus a biome and the ring effect which you see when it is in maximum focus and as you suggested we should not be greedy to go in more field of vision and then you would have that little edges of uh, a little blur which you may see and then you may touch the cornea yeah that's 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 exactly. absolutely bang bang on uh, kind of a presentation and uh, really really fantastic uh, presentation and uh, hopefully yeah we may not require your slides but yeah your expertise to help us uh, help our uh, 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 younger colleagues who would be joining us as faculty or probably learn better from them so uh, my sir rajesh sir uh, 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 there would be many other uh, senior faculties also. I'm just trying to see who all are there. If they have any comments, Pradeep, uh, uh, Madhu sir, Payal, Ashok sir, if you guys have any questions, please, uh, Prabhu sir, Ravi sir. So a lot of our senior faculties are also there from other, other branches like uh, uh, Shimoga, Guntur, uh, uh, Coimbatore, uh, uh, Ludhiana, Anand, so we have around 11, 11 branches all over India. So as you yes. can see, uh, and people are just stuck onto the screen to understand what you're presenting. And hopefully it, it is helping us all. So kindly please, all of us can give some uh, feedbacks and also share some comments or uh, queries with Mr. Lars. And it was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm, uh, I, I really appreciate uh, that you uh, like it, uh, and uh, I spent uh, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, showing this because uh, I was just at the uh, the Thessaloniki Visual Summer School together with.